Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with, as always, my special guest, John Barker. And, John, you're into the second week of the legislature, and so that's why the show's called Legislative Updates. Right. And so you've come straight from Topeka now, and you're on your way back, and it's Friday afternoon as we film this, and fairly late Friday afternoon. Matter of fact, Jim Denning was going to come with you, but, of course, Jim's uh, iced housed in. out of... Yeah, iced in, and he's out of Olathe, so uh, he'd had to come back to here and then turn around and go back. back. And the roads aren't great, but we appreciate yeah. you taking time to stop and come in. And I know this is already hitting the ground. And man, oh man, there's a lot going on because I've been reading about it. Where do you want to start? Oh, just talk about, uh, you know, it's the end of the first week. We went on, uh, we went in on Monday at 2 o'clock, which is our normal starting time uh, to start a session at 2 o'clock by statute. Uh, short uh, session, uh, you know, got to get all the bills read in that were pre-filed before the legislature started. And then Tuesday morning, we kind of hit the ground running. We had a committee meeting at Federal and State Affairs, and some of the other committees also met, not all of them. Uh, and we were updated on the bills that we have in uh, committee from a holdover from last year, uh, the new bills that have been introduced. And then the second day, uh, on Wednesday, I had a briefing uh, for uh, my committee members on the Consti on the uh, Supreme Court decision, the Napier decision, uh, which the Supreme Court uh, uh, um, put out last year on the dismemberment abortion. They really never addressed dismemberment abortion. Uh, they had just addressed the abortion, and they found in the Kansas Constitution, and they're using a different standard than the federal, go federal system uses, which is undue burden, and you're familiar with an undue yeah. burden, they changed it to a strict scrutiny, uh, which is a higher burden, and they just found that there was a uh, constitutional right for an abortion in the state of Kansas. Uh, a number of people have disagreed with that. At the conclusion of that hearing on, on Wednesday, uh, I introduced a constitutional amendment. Uh, it's a House Concurrent Resolution 2019. Uh, which would allow the legislature, should it pass, make those determinations and not the court system. Uh, the Senate also introduced a Senate concurrent resolution on the same day. It was Senate con uh, concurrent resolution 1603. It was introduced by uh, Senator Welber, uh, the Senate uh, Judiciary Chair. And uh, come Tuesday of next week, we will have a joint uh, meeting with the Senate Judiciary and the House Federal and State Affairs and we will then take, uh, take evidence, or we'll have conferees come in. The proponents to the uh, constitutional amendment will be in the morning, and the opponents will be in the afternoon. And at some time after we've concluded our hearings, we will work the bill. It means we will either uh, place it or put it out for the uh, full body to look at, or we will uh, amend it in some way. There'll be a number of amendments that will be offered. Um, I think it's uh, it's well written. Uh, I don't think it needs any amendments, but of course, uh, you can't stop that. Right. Uh, there'll be members on the committee. I had one member uh, who wasn't not normally on my committee, but was put on by the Democratic uh, Party uh, for the purpose of this meeting. He called me today and said he had 21 amendments. Hmm. Uh, and I, I I know the the representative's a nice guy, uh, and I said, well, we'll just take our time and we'll go through each one of them. And then, uh, but eventually, you can't delay the whole process. Uh, the bill will probably come out of committee. Uh, and then, and then ultimately, John, what what would happen is, uh, you anticipate that this would then go to the, uh, to the, uh, to a, an election. It will go to an election, and I have it set for the primary election in August. And the people would decide. The people. That's exactly. Well, I want the people to vote, to tell us, their representatives, what they want in their constitution. Uh, and so we've elected to put it on the primary election in August. Uh, if it passes, it has to pass by two-thirds uh, in the House and by two-thirds in the Senate. Uh, it's not a bill, so the governor doesn't get to weigh in on it. Because she can't it, veto it or, can't or be, approve it. And she would if she had an opportunity, okay. but she, will, she won't have be given an opportunity under the, uh, our statute under the constitutional amendment. It then goes directly to the electorate the voters and let the voters of the state of Kansas uh, tell us what they want, whether they want the courts to make that decision or the legislature to make that decision. So 
Uh, that's scheduled for Tuesday. Uh, but we, you know, we had another full week. Uh, Wednesday, of course, we went into, uh, we had the uh, State of the State by the governor. Um, she spoke about 32 minutes. Um, it was very much like last year. She wanted to spend more money and create more programs. Uh, she also mentioned her, uh, her executive reorganization order, which we talked about a little bit last week, the ERO, about consolidating right. uh, state agencies. So we've got a full, uh, you know, full schedule. We've got a lot of things on our plate. Uh, where we're going to be busy for the next. Yeah, month. you're going to be. We're going to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker. And John, of course, is the representative of the 70th District and uh, just coming in out of Topeka on his way back to uh, Abilene to go home. And he stops and uh, we get the chance to film legislative updates and share what's going on directly from the legislature with somebody who knows because he's in it. And you're working on fourth term? Yes, I'm working on fourth term. And uh, I know you're involved in a lot of committees, but right before we cut away to break, we were talking about the people in Kansas are going to have a chance, you anticipate will have a chance to be able to vote on that abortion issue. That's correct. Um, and, and I'm guessing that this is going to really be a lightning rod because there's some people that are adamant this way and some people the opposite way. So what what... What do you anticipate? What, what's the issue? What's the plan that you see it as you want to move forward to have the uh, people address this issue? Well, the, the Supreme Court went way back to 1855 to the, our original uh, Wyandotte Convention for the, and found that there was a, uh, a right to, for an abortion. Uh, they used a different standard than the federal courts used. The federal courts uh, under Roe v. Wade and, and other decisions after that, I always used undue burden. We, we don't want to put an undue burden on people. Uh, Kansas Supreme Court says, no, we're not going to use that standard. We're going to use a higher standard, which is scr uh, strict scrutiny, which the state has to have a really compelling interest to go in and regulate anything when it, when it uh, pertains to abortion. So this constitutional amendment, we call it uh, the Value Both Amendment, which is to protect both women and babies. Uh, and if it's passed out, and I'm very optimistic that it will be passed out by the two-thirds in both bodies, then it goes to the voters. And the voters get to tell us. And, you know, let the voters tell us. Uh, we want the voters to come out and, and voice their opinion, whether or not they want to have a, a open abortion policy that was opened up by the Supreme Court, or should it be more restrictive and then allow the legislature to place those restrictions on it, like the dismemberment abortion, which is the late-term abortions. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I am very optimistic that uh, we will be able to get this accomplished. I, I, they had a rally at the, uh, at the uh, Capitol yesterday, uh, and they were all uh, female legislators that were for this amendment. They had, they had a rally, uh, had a press conference. Uh, but it is, it's a divisive issue. Uh, and the best way to address that is let the voters decide. Uh, I'm very confident. I have great faith in the voters of the state of, this, uh, of Kansas. And just put it on the ballot and let the voters tell us what they want us to do. Whether they want to go with the Supreme Court's version, which is kind of a open ab ab abortions, or should it be more restrictive? So uh, that's going to be next week. It's going to be a busy week. Uh, of course, sun, uh, change subjects here. On, on Wednesday, the uh, governor made her state of the state. You know, we're going to have $1.1 billion surplus, about 15% with an ending, ba ending balance. She wants to spend all that. And she wants to also get additional money for the uh, re of the of the capers. And uh, I'm hopeful i got a chart here that we can put on screen at some point in time to get the money, a few hundred million dollars up front, it's going to cost us $4.4 .4 billion because oh. we've got to pay the 7.75% interest because that's statutorily what we have to pay. And it's going to cost us uh, over the 30 years. Uh, and we have a plan. We worked it out over the years. She tried this last year and it was unsuccessful. I can't believe she's coming back in this year and wanting to get it again. But uh, to, get this, uh, to get this additional funds to spend now, we're going to 
be tasking our children and probably our grandchildren to pay for it. Mm -hmm. It's money now, pay later. I remember that coming up last year and there was a, a lot of opposition to it and I remember, uh, uh, I don't remember if it was Jim Danning or Dan Hawkins, one of them came in and had a pretty uh, a chart probably similar to right. what you prepared here and it was showing about how expensive that will be in for so many years. But I do remember when uh, the multiple legislators have been here and one of the things that they said is this is a question that they often have to field. And it said, will the capers be still in existence when we get to the time of retirement or is that going to be financially um, exhausted? And, and so I know that you and others have had the idea that we want to get that account back to where it belongs so that it's fully uh, finance. Right. And, and, and what caused this unfunded actuary was back in 92 or 93, the legislature changed the retirement system and reduced it down, was it age 60 or 65, they reduced it down to 85 points, which is age and years of service. And I talked to some older legislators who were around us, some staff people, and they, they, they kind of laughed. You know, we gave more benefits, but we never collected any more money. So they knew this was going to happen. So we got into this situation, um, and now we had several plans to work it out. Uh, I mean, uh, under uh, uh, Governor Brownback, he had a plan. Of course, he came in a few years later and wanted to kick it down the road another 10 years, and we fought that off. Now Governor Kelly uh, wants to get the additional money, and it's a $4.4 .4 billion of new debt that we would have on top of what we already have. So it's, it's, you know, and she runs it out to 2045. Uh, and of course, that'll be our grandchildren paying for that. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, 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 you know, I, I like to, to grow the state of Kansas. She wants to grow government. And growing government is never good because you, to grow government, you must take that money out of the taxpayers' hands because they believe they can spend it better than the individual. And I don't believe that. I leave that money. Every time you raise taxes, you take money out of the economy. And government, of course, grows. And uh, you know, it has to. You know, it has to grow maybe some, but it grows, you know, uh, by a larger percent than any of the private companies. And uh, so we have the highest number of public employees per capita than most states around us. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. And uh, and of course, when government grows, why it, it just uh, you start a program, it just is almost impossible to get rid of it. Right. So we're going to cut away, take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my guest, John Barker. And John, right before we cut to break, we were talking about the, uh, the ability that, uh, or the abortion issue, but mm -hmm. people will be able to go online and listen to that. And we'll put up on the screen uh, where that information is. There won't be a video with it, but they would be able to go online and listen to it right, and argue. hear both sides of the argument because I'm sure that's going to be heated debates and uh, both sides will be very passionate about it. And then it'll hopefully it'll come to the voters and they'll make the decision. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, I, we always encourage people to go to, uh, to our website, to listen to it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have video, but we do have audio. Uh, and that's every day. Uh, in the legislature. You can go to different committees and listen to those committees. Uh, and, and on 3.30, now the, the one we were talking about was the 9 a.m., it starts at 9 a.m. It's in the old, uh, what we call the old Supreme Court room in the Capitol. Uh, it'll be a joint committee with the uh, Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, which uh, Senator Welber, who represents part of Dickinson County and, and Marion County and Morris County, uh, is chairman of the Senate Judiciary, uh, and he has, I believe, 11 members on his committee. So it'll be a large committee. Uh, there's, it's a large room, but it, it will take time because when conferees come in, of course, they will present their testimony, but then members get to ask questions. questions. Well, if you have 23 members in the House, yeah. you've got 11, 12 members uh, in the Senate Judiciary, uh, just the questioning can take a little bit of right. time. Right. Uh, but uh, Senator Welber and I have been on the phone today and we've worked out uh, kind of some guidelines. Good. Uh, we will limit questioning, amount of time limits. We'll right. have to put time limits on them. But uh, I, it, it'll be an interesting uh, and informative hearing. 
uh, and hopefully uh, at some point in time after we've taken all the uh, the testimony we will then render decisions both in the Senate on their side now they have we have two constitutional amendments one in the Senate one in the House theoretically if we would both pass those without amendments it would would not need to go to the other body uh, so uh, it may be streamlined we like to think it may be but it may not be if they amend it then of course then their bill would come to the to the house and our bill would or go the other way, go the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's another briefing that day at 3:30 that I'm going to kind of watch closely it's the uh, Kansas Department of Education um, Dell Dennis and Brad Newswander uh, with the Kansas State Board of Education will be coming in and talking about at-risk funding because this is where we had the problem this past year we gave them an additional 400 million dollars to spend on at risk which is the one third of the kids that are not doing well right I remember and it came back from our post auditors who are nonpartisan came back and said the money wasn't spent for those kids it's got to spin across the board uh, and you know we're never going to get that one third to do better unless we start spending money on them directly so they're going to come in and just uh, and, and tell us why they spent the money uh, in the direction that they did. Um, so that's I find that's going to be very interesting, and I want to watch the, the responses to that because they're going to come in and ask for more at-risk money, and I just want it to spend on on, on the at-risk kids, right? The kids that are at risk. So that's going to be interesting. Wednesday, of course, the twenty-second, we've got a uh, a number of other uh, committees that are going to be dealing with. Uh, 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 the Child Death Review Board uh, appropriations is going to be looking at uh, uh, the uh, a number of issues involving appropriations to the state. Thursday, of course, is uh, I've I've got a couple of bills that are probably going to be introduced. I know that uh, I know uh, that tax because I'm on tax. Uh, we're going to be addressing some issues on some uh, some taxes as far as sales taxes uh, on food. Is that is that an issue there on the sales tax? Because I've been reading in the paper that there was some desire to eliminate the sales tax for some people for food, and and yet leave it in place for others. But that that seems to raise a pretty good sum of money. And and then traditionally, if I recall right from prior conversations with it, is that's one that affects everybody. Exactly. Everybody pays. And and I would like to see it across the board. Uh, I mean, everybody needs food. Uh, the governor's plan is a little different. She wants to do some of a tax credit uh, at the end of the year uh, to give you, uh, to give uh, the lower uh, economically based people to, to, to get, a, get a credit. Uh, I'm not really opposed to that, but I, uh, you know, if you're gonna do, I think it's simpler because a lot of people don't actually pay taxes. So I'm not sure how they're going to get a tax credit if you don't pay tax. Well, I was kind of wondering that when you said it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, those are things that in a tax committee we have to look at a lot of different, you know, you, you raise one issue and it, it also touches on about ten other issues. And whether or not, uh, what items, w uh, food, what's classified as food, you know, I, if you're going to do food items and grocery stores can do this with their computers, identify those items, but a lot of the smaller grocery stores can't. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's easy to talk about, it's hard to do, to implement. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that, and of course we'll be talking about the, uh, the ERO, the Executive uh, Order, Reorganization Order, about consolidating a couple of uh, different uh, departments. Uh, uh, Secretary Howard now is Secretary of both those departments, and the Governor wants to consolidate. And it reminds me of going back to the days of SRS, where everything come under SRS, and SRS had like a $3 billion, $4 billion budget uh, to include juveniles. And she wants to add juveniles back, and we'd taken juveniles out uh, a few years ago, and of course we had a commissioner uh, of, of juveniles, but uh, that kind of went away and they put them under the Department of Corrections. Sometimes it just, we, we go back to what we were doing Ten years ago, or fifteen years ago, and I'm guessing there's some expenses when you reorganize in that fashion, one way or the other. And a lot of trailer bills, or bills coming in the next year to to make all those things work. Work. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we've experienced that. I went through one of reorganizational with uh, Governor Brownback, and 
you know, the following year we had uh, probably five or six bills that had to, we needed to pass. And of course, after the new the reorganization, then they said, well, you've got to pass these. Yeah, now you have to, huh? Yeah. We're going to cut away and take our final break. You are watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm Doug Thompson with John Barker. John, we're at the, almost at the end of the show. And partner, let me tell you first, thank you for your many years of service in the military and uh, as a judge and now as a legislator. And we really appreciate the fact that you do it, that you take time. I know you're tired. And when you come back and you take time to uh, share with us uh, on your way home, John, thank you so much. And thanks for watching All Legislative right. Updates with John Barker. <laughs>